Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. It is Tip Tuesday. So today I'm going to do another invitation. I'm also going to stream from my page. So let me go to my page so those who are following me on my page can actually um, join in on Tip Tuesday to participate in our lively chat when it comes to natural hair so let me go ahead and connect on my page right now because i am streaming so you may see me looking up looking down but today i am so glad to be back on tip tuesday welcome back to tip tuesday hi my name is Carol maxinu i am your natural hair consultant author podcaster and your certified curl uh, hair loss practitioner. My mission is to help women with natural Afro texture hair to overcome the challenges and the uncertainty so that she can be on a path to achieving healthy and or growing natural hair with confidence. So today I am streaming from um, my natural hair group which is keeping a natural hair group. For those who are not in this group, make sure you definitely uh, join in there. I become very active interacting um, with my fellow members on how they can overcome their challenges within their hair care so that she can embrace her hair of confidence. I'm also streaming from my live page so that I don't often do this, but I want you to get a taste what actually goes on in this group. So. Thank you again for joining me on Keep It A Natural Hair Group. So today, what I'm gonna talk about is four common hair problems that naturals make within their hair care journey and why you should definitely keep yourself away from that as much as possible. I know that a natural hair journey can be very challenging. It can be overwhelming at times and sometimes you may not know what to do. It's a journey for a reason. It's a journey for you to go through certain tests, go through certain trials, and when you come out of it, you actually become more experienced and you become your own expert on what works for your hair, not someone else. So for today, I'm gonna give you four common hair problems that I've seen where naturals experience. Number one, curl crush. Who here has a curl crush? Does anyone here has a curl crush? Because um, one thing about having a curl crush is that um, curl crush can be a motivation. Let me just check for the comments, make sure anything coming in. Okay. One thing about um, having a curl crush, it can be a motivation. Use curl crush as a motivation, okay? But I don't want you to be so overwhelmed that you see a certain style, you see a certain length, you see a certain thickness that you want to <laughs> buy or do anything, whatever you can to get that look. We have to keep things in realistic when it comes to our natural hair. Now, curl crush could be, again, a positive thing. It could be your motivator. It could be your drive, right? But Say that you see a, a length, right? Because I know sometimes in the natural hair community, we want this length, we want this volume, we want this thickness. And sometimes that could become an obsession, right? And knowing that we may have thinner hair or we may not have long hair, but yet we want long hair and thick hair. We have to learn how to work with our own hair. OK, we have to learn to see what we need specifically to hopefully improve some type of length and hopefully to improve some type of thickness within our hair. OK, using curl crush pictures, profile of other ladies with thick volumes here. Again, it's an inspiration, it's a motivator, but the disappointment comes when you do not get that length, you do not get that thickness. Right. And then you go ahead and then you say that natural hair doesn't work because you're following somebody else's look. Focus on what works for you so you don't restrict yourself of your own beauty, of your own self-worth, okay? So tip number one, try to limit yourself on curl crushes. Use them as a motivation, but do not keep yourself in obsession box where it, where it restrict your own self-worth and your own self-beauty. OK, because there are short hairstyles that you can rock all day, every day. My hair is short. 
right? Thank you so much for the hearts. Thank you so much. My hair is short, okay? When I go ahead and I blow dry it out, you can see more of this, more of the length, correct? And that happens to mostly every curly girl out there. Good evening. Good evening, Crystal. Good evening. I'm streaming from my page. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you for joining me. So my hair is short. I'm not obsessed with anybody with long curly hair. If the hair is long, that is a blessing to them. If your hair is short, learn how to accept your hair the way it is and embrace that look because natural hairstyles come in different styles, okay? Enough is enough about this curl, curl crush, more specifically when it comes to long curly hair down your back, down your what, tail, tailbone, knowing that your own hair may not get to that length. But like I said, it's okay to try to work with certain um, routines and regimen and knowing your own hair in order to increase more length of your hair by what? Length retention strategies, right? So that's one thing I want you to keep in consideration. Curl crush can be a crush on your confidence. Curl crush can become a crush on your confidence when you become obsessed, when you want to just follow and copycat what you see when you're knowing your own hair makeup DNA is limited by a certain extent. You don't know what he or she has done to her hair to get it thick or to get it to a certain length. You don't know he or she um, growth rate. But like I said, use the curl crush as a motivator to keep your health of your hair. But when there is a setback because you become so obsessed within the curly girl um, community, oh, I want to see long, thick hair, and that is the go-to, and that's what natural hair must look like, please, you're deceiving yourself. And when that doesn't happen, then you say natural hair does not work. Then you say this natural hair journey is hard. BS is not hard. You're following somebody else is look what they've developed. You are in this perception of trying to create a delusion of what you want to get, but there is a certain restriction that you may not get there. Get back into reality and focus what works for you. Tip number two, following trends. This this is gonna um, come into alignment with what I'm speaking of. If you have any comments, hey, beautiful, hello, 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 hi. So, um, this is gonna follow into what I'm gonna um, project from curl crush into following trends. That's tip number two. Today, I'm speaking of four common problems that I see naturals make within their natural hair journey. Number one, I talk about curl crush, okay? Curl crush. Number two, we're gonna talk about following trends. There are many, many trends out there. Trends come, trends go. And sometimes these trends are kind of fabricated to say that this is how natural hair is supposed to be. This is the treatments for natural hair. You know what I mean? Like, what is up with this wash, wash, um, this water only wash? I don't get it. Wash your hair with water only. That was a trend. <laughs> How are you gonna wash your hair with water only? Can I ask you a question? When you sweat, when you when you work out and you and you scream sweat, do you go in the shower and you wash your body with water only? Why would you do that same thing with your hair? That that was a trend. Water washing only. I don't get it. <laughs> if you get that concept out there, let me know. Put it in the comment that you understand what is water washing is about is all about because I do not get it. Okay? Stop following other trends. What you what is popular, what is popping. Follow and get to know what's best for your own hair. And also test the truth about those trends. Even though he or she may say work for her, and it possibly did, but when you go ahead and try it, you don't know what they did in order to do that. They may, e they may even twist it a little bit, you don't know. So limit yourself into following trends. Another one is number three, limiting yourself to specific products and DIY. I know, I'm gonna bust some bubbles today. Natural hair products are 
pretty much commercialized in order to make money making because you know natural hair is um, on a rise and that women want to embrace their natural hair. So therefore, um, there are natural hair products that are catered towards our type of hair. My hair is four type hair. Your hair may be a different type of hair, maybe three, okay? Sorry, uh, yeah, type three, type three, okay? <laughs> And that is great. We need natural hair products that is tailored towards our needs. But sometimes we get so restricted, like I must use natural hair products and I must get the expensive products. And then when you try that natural hair product that's so expensive because it's tailored towards Afro descendant race only, only, and when you try it, you blame that product. It's okay to go out of your comfort zone and try other products that are not specifically made for Afro textured hair. And that will work because hair is hair. Think about it. Hair is hair. It's okay to use less expensive products that works. Just read the label read the label, see what the ingredients are to see that it makes sense for your hair. What I'm saying is do not limit yourself to only um, natural hair products only where there are other products that are not specifically cater towards other um, natural hair products that you still can use and it still does best for your hair the same way. If you think about it, don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. I must get this expensive product. Don't limit yourself. I must only get natural hair products. I don't use 100% natural hair products. I don't. My shampoo, um, what I use, I, I, I use shampoo and it's from, uh, G, what is it called, Giovanni? And it's deep conditioner. And it's non-Afro descendant, uh, <laughs> uh, not a what, black product? And it works. It works great for my hair. I love the conditioner. I love the shampoo. It works great for my hair. DIY. DIY is good. There's nothing wrong with DIY because it has its benefits. But the thing that I found out that because you're natural, you have to associate yourself. I must do a DIY. Why is that? And I'm guilty as I'm guilty as well because. In the past, when I became natural, transitioned from relaxed hair to a natural hair, I thought that was a thing to do. I must always stick myself using natural hair products that's made for people of color, black women, and I must also use DIY. But I found that is a lie. First of all, I'm not a chemist. <laughs> I do not know anything about product formulation and mixing it and making sure everything is mixed well because I'm thinking that it's going to do what the YouTuber says it's going to do, condition, moisturize my hair and treat my hair. But if you look at it, that's where that's where products are actually processed, formalized, even when they're not naturally de derived to do what they need to do. Not only um, treat the top external of your, of your hair, but also get inside of your hair, the cortex. Now we are now we are cooking up these concoction of DIY. We're not um, educated in product formulation, but we're just following um, certain recipes. And we're just following what this person say works for the hair, and then when we put it on the hair, banana mask, avocado mask, and these other thickened masks um, that will sit on top of your hair, but do that actually penetrate inside of your hair? You just cannot treat outside of your hair. That if it's actually treating, it may, it may condition it, it may make it feel soft, but is it actually treating your hair? Even like egg. Egg is protein, but egg is going to sit on top of your hair, but is the protein going to get inside of your inside of your hair as well. That's where deep conditioners are formulated to not only work on the outside of the strand of your hair, your cuticles, but also the hydrolyzed protein where our minute and the molecules are very tiny enough to penetrate through the cuticles. But if you just whip up these 
concoctions that you see that claim that they work and by all means they do have that benefit, but there are a certain extent that they can do what they're going to do. And then when you wash it out, you have these clumps of byproducts left in your hair. Who wants that? that that's just a mess. I don't get it. I suggest if you're going to do something like that, why don't do like a nice hot, hot oil treatment? At least you know what hot oil treatment will not only go on top of your hair, but it will also go inside of your cuticles as well. The penetrating oils mixed with essential oils to help at least help with that instead of cooking up all these thick and blending banana avocado. And then you wonder why your hair is dry. You wonder why your hair is breaking. If that is one of your majority of your go-to concoction DIY product and excluding other manufactured products that already process it and already formulate it well to treat your hair. Does that make sense? <laughs> Y'all don't have to agree with me on this, but this is what I see it is definitely an issue in a hair care community. Limit limiting ourselves to only um, natural hair products, cater towards um, black women, that we feel like if we go outside and use another product that is not made for black women, we should have a guilty conscience. Psychologically, we don't think about that, but psychologically is like, I can't, I, I have to stick within my own and it must be expensive and it doesn't have to be that way. What I'm trying to say is there are less expensive products and there are um, products that are not um, marketed towards African-American women and it will still work for your hair the same way because hair is hair. Just read the label, read the ingredients, what it's made about, and it will give you a clear conscience if that is a product you should use for your hair. I talk about this in my natural in my Keep It a Natural Hair group is that when they say, Karan, what product should I use for my hair? I'm like, um, <clears throat> there are many, many products out there. There are many, many products out there. We need products for our hair. But if you don't understand the ingredients, on what they do for your hair and where they are. You remember the five, the five ingredients? Who who know about the five top ingredients? The five top ingredients will set the foundation of what that product will do for your hair. If you understand the five top products, then it will give you an indication that this product is gonna do what it's gonna do in conjunction with the ingredients that make up the product. Now, we don't know the ratio of this ingredient with that ingredient. We don't know the ratio, but at least we have an indication of what the top five products, five ingredients are and where they are based on what the product is, says claim that it's going to do. Now, if it's missing a certain ingredient, say that it's going to do this, do that, then, okay, maybe you need to go ahead and maybe add something else to it that you can do on your own because at least you know an ingredient can help it out depending on what the product claim is going to do. And also for DIY, love the DIY, but just be very cautious on how you're doing your DIY. If you are a chemist, if you know about product formulation and ratios in order to get moisture, in order to pre prevent um, breakage, in order to create like a protein balance, then go ahead, do your D DIY. And also the, the shelf life of the DIY. I've done DIY before. I've done the, um, the, the the buttercream and the conditioner type thing DIY, but then I realized the next day or two days later, it starts smelling funny and it starts turning another color. And I need to, <laughs> and you know that products are, have some shelf life, meaning that there, there are some, there are preservative in there to preserve it the long life of the product. Because you cannot do a DIY and think it's gonna serve you as compared to a product that's already been processed to do that, naturally processed to do that for natural hair. So if you're gonna do, do, do your DIY, definitely do your research about the DIY and knowing what you're using a DIY for. If you said my hair needs repair, um, Repair, repair where? On the outside, on the inside, moisture where? Just moisture on the outside, moisture on the inside. Question those things when it comes to DIY. And these are the um, 
the following trends when it comes to natural hair that I must, uh, again, stick to my own product line, cater for me. It's okay. And if I go outside of that, I have a guilty conscience and it must be expensive. Oh, and don't forget, I must do a DIY. And then you have these hybrid type of products going on in your cupboard. That's your products and DIY. And DIY that has that has its own ex expiration date the next day or two days later. The last one is thinking that your hair is difficult to manage. Thinking that your natural hair is difficult to manage. If you think your natural hair is difficult to manage, go ahead and put a comment in below. Put a comment below if you think your natural hair is hard to manage. It's okay. I, I used to thought that my natural hair was hard to manage. <laughs> but you know what? It's only hard to manage when you don't know what to do with it, right? It's only hard to manage when you don't know the steps in order to make it easier for you. Because every natural girl experience is different. So once you understand that your natural hair is not difficult, then you know a routine and a regimen in order to make it easier for you. Now, the reason why, let's, 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 let's put it out there. The reason why we feel that natural hair is difficult because number one, we feel like it's difficult to comb through. Can I, is that correct? If that's correct, put a yes below. We feel that it's difficult to comb through. That's why we think it's difficult. Number two, we think it's difficult because we, we, we experience dryness, which leads to breakage. And last and not least, we feel like it's difficult to manage because we cannot get it to behave or keep that certain behavior or look as long as possible without manipulating it. <laughs> but you have to understand that your hair is unique to you. Whether straight hair or kinky coily hair, it's unique to you and it's personal to you. That is why you have to develop a strategy, a routine, a simple uh, process for your hair to make it easier. If you have developed a easier process for your hair, I would love to know. You can definitely share your experience because it can definitely help someone who is experienced um, struggle feeling that natural hair is difficult to manage. But one thing I know personally about mat about natural hair is that over time, which should not take long either, that it will save you time, it will save you the frustration, and that you will also save money in the long run. But it shouldn't take that long. One thing about natural hair is if you learn to keep it healthy, stop following curl crush that can lead to curl crush deconfidence, and kill your self-esteem, stop following trends and stop limiting yourself to products and feel like DIY is the only go-to or the majority go-to that you need to do for your hair. And then you're wondering why you feel like natural hair is hard when you see the results of it, breakage, dryness, and you're not getting it to do what you want it to do. Sometimes you just gotta let it be. And it's okay to let it be. It's natural hair. It's in its natural state. Just work with it. I just want to let you know that this is only temporarily. <laughs> the challenges that we experience with natural hair is only temporarily. Because natural hair is a journey in itself. Natural hair is a journey in itself. You will experience trials, you will experience setbacks, but you do not have to keep in those lanes. As long as you remember one of many of these four common hair problems that I've seen as the complaint when it comes to natural hair. If you ladies have any questions, definitely, um, you can definitely put a comment below. If this kind of make you think about, um, 
what your thoughts about natural hair is. If you can identify with any of these four um, identifiers that I mentioned, because sometimes we just get caught up in this whole natural hair, natural hair following fashion stuff, but we don't actually really sit back. Thank you so much for those hearts. Thank you so much. We don't really sit back and question our own hair. We don't really take the time out to study our own hair, but yet we're following other people, um, routines and what they do for their hair, hoping that we get the same results. And usually we, more than likely 90% of the time we don't because that is not our hair. Even though the hair, I always preach this, even though our hair looks the same, it does not accept, nor does it respond the same way to another curly girl's hair. Even though you want long, thick, voluminous hair, first of all, you have to see if your hair is capable of doing that. And yes, it's capable, but what will it take for you to achieve that? Because every person's growth rate is different. Every person's density is different. Every person's hand, um, hair strand size is different. So you mean that you're telling me that because there's a difference, I cannot achieve what I want, curl crush look? Yes. That's what I'm saying. Because your own profile is different from her profile. My hair is thick, but my hair is not like thick, thick, like out like that. Because of my density, because of my strand size, because of my um my hair, my, my porosity. Because of my growth rate, my own hair has its DNA. My hair is already predetermined what it's going to be, how thick it's going to be, how long it's going to be. It's already predetermined when, when I was born. It was, it was already set, that's your DNA. So why are we killing ourselves over curl crush, problem number one, to get this obsession by long, thick hair? And that's why killing so many naturals because they feel like that's what natural hair should look like. And I'm here to tell you, honey, it's killing your self-confidence. It's killing your self-worth. It's killing the beauty that is unique about your hair. So stop. Once you pull that away, once you take that off your eyes, that blindness, that lie, then you will see that natural hair is not difficult to care for. Once you understand and study your own hair. Does that make sense? <laughs> Okay, I'm so happy that you were able to join me live. I come live on Tip Tuesday. Yes, I bring it with a twist. I don't follow natural hair trends. I follow best practice for your own natural hair. Having suggestions about what to use for your hair and products for your hair, this goes for anyone. There is good, but there is good intentions behind it. But if you don't have a proper analysis or a proper consultation to understand what you need specifically for your hair and the truth when it comes to goal setting, it will save you a lot of heartache. And it will awaken your realization and the outlook of beauty what you actually possibly and can achieve. So I'm coming on tonight to shed some light and to also make you think about these four common hair problems within our natural hair community. And there's many, many more. There's so much more about them. Okay? So just... Love your natural hair the way it is. Learn about it. Feel it. And it's okay to experiment with other products. It's okay. I'm not saying don't experiment <laughs> with other, other products. But what I'm trying to say is don't restrict yourself to like, I must use this product because it's catered towards natural black hair. And I can't go, go outside of that. If I do, oh my God, woe is me. 
please. I must I must incorporate some kind of DIY somewhere in my regimen, or if I don't, I'm not natural because it, it, it's a natural vegetable product that I'm using or fruit product that I'm using. Woe is me if I don't do that. Stop it. You don't. I must follow these certain trends. If I don't follow these certain trends, oh, I'm not natural. Woe is me. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm part of the natural hair community because this so-and-so is doing it. Even though we know that it may look silly, <laughs> like washing your hair with water only. That does not make sense. There's a place and there's a time when it comes to treatments that is specific for a certain need within your hair care regimen. I have posted in the group that I don't share my hair, I don't share my hair regimen. It may, and you may say, why not? Come on, a lot of women share their hair, hair regimen. I'm not saying that I cannot share my hair regimen, but because of these problems of following certain trends or following somebody else's regimen, knowing that the hair that you have on your head, you may experience it that is already hard. I don't want you to feel stuck in that place anymore. I want you to now understand and get the realization about your own hair and study it. I will say I will use this product for my hair, but based on my own hair needs and based on my own hair, uh, based on my own lifestyle. That's what works for me. And even if I do say this regimen, my regimen changes. So what benefit you for me to say, this is what I use for my hair regimen. You go ahead and use it and it may not work for you. Where do you live? Do you live in a hot climate? Do you live in a, in a cold climate? If I say I use this regimen and you live in a cold climate, but yet I use it for a hot, and yet I use it um, when I need it for my hot climate, what, what does it benefit you? But I say, it works for me all the time. But when you go ahead and use that regimen based on, yes, your climate, we don't think about climates too, because we say natural hair is hard. And if I disclose that and you use that regimen, based on where you live, then you say it doesn't work. But it worked for me in my climate and it worked for me because of the, my characteristic and my whole DNA and my whole makeup and my whole profile of my hair. <laughs> so I hope this is shedding some light on you ladies. I just wanna let you know, being a natural girl, woman, is beautiful. God has blessed you with this. He has blessed you to take care of it. There's nothing wrong with natural hair. No matter what hairstyle you choose to wear of your choice. But one thing I can say is, is that say if you degrade natural hair and you see it as a problem because you have not learned to totally love yourself. Because when you love yourself, you don't talk bad about this. You learn to accept it. And then once you learn to accept it, you learn to embrace it. And that's love. So thank you so much for joining me today on Tip Tuesday for those who um, are seeing me from my page, just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I do come on every week on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in my Keeping It Natural Hair group. You're welcome to join. And one thing about me is I like to interact. I like to come on live to um, present on certain touchy topics that we need to share, we need to talk about. And also next month, if you're not in my group, and if you are in my group, I'm going to bring back our I can and I will virtual meet up online in our room chat where we actually see each other live, where we talk, where we share our hair experience and encourage one another. So let's get together and let's talk about our hair. And I will uh, post a date soon. Um, oh. 
Yeah, it was last. Yeah, it was last month. Now it's August. Oh, time went by so fast. So I will post it. Um, probably next week or so. I'll probably do it next week or the following week. I haven't made up my mind, but it's going to be done this uh, month. So if you want to join in, definitely be a part of Keep It In At Your Hair Group. You're welcome. And those who are part, part of Keep It In At Your Hair Group, I just want to say thank you so much. You ladies are so beautiful. You're so wonderful. I love the, the comments. I love your questions. And I love your answers too. And, and definitely helping each other out in a group. That is what we do as a community of naturals, helping each other out so you feel like you're not alone and that this natural hair journey is not hard. <laughs> Just keep it simple, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple. <laughs> and I'm not saying the last S. <laughs> so thank you so much. This is Crow Back City, your natural hair consultant, certified hair loss practitioner, author, and podcaster, coming to you every single, single week on Tip Tuesday to help you to overcome your uncertainties and your challenges when it comes to your natural hair so that you can embrace your natural hair that God has blessed you with. And I'll see you next Tuesday. And if you have any questions, you know what to do, post them below. And if you wanna be part of my advanced Natural Hair Club membership where I dive deeper into topic lessons like these, but not only that, giving you free consultation, guidance, strategies on what to do when it comes to your own hair, and no one else so that you can personally see the results that you're looking for definitely click the link and i will see you in that group and also as a complimentary gift i will give you my natural hair journal that is sold on amazon free just by saying thank you for taking the leap thank you for being a natural girl who love who wants to improve and embrace her textured hair and i'll see you next week and god bless Mwah. <laughs>